When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the common household substances we can find in our house, and we classified them as either bases, acids, or neutral substances. In this video, we're going to kind of cover the next dot point, which just relates to the last one, because in this one, we're going to find out what we actually use to check for pH for different substances. In this case, we're going to check, we're going to talk about the indicators. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify that indicators such as litmus, phenylphthalein, methyl orange, and bromothymol blue can be used to determine the acidic or basic nature of a material over range, and that range is identified by a change in indicator color. So there's a couple of points. First, we need to identify that these indicators are important. So litmus, phenylphthalein, methyl orange, and bromothymol blue. These ones we'll be talking about in this video. And that they can be used to determine the acidic or basic nature of a material over a range, so that we can find out if a certain substance is a base, a neutral substance, or a acidic substance using these indicators. And a way we can do that is by identifying that it changes color depending if it's an acid or a base. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Before we start, we'll talk about someone called Robert Boyle. And you've actually heard about him in year 11 as well already. But in this case, we're going to talk about Robert Boyle in terms of his discoveries about acids and bases. So in the 17th century, he found out, he sort of summarized, so he summarized some of the properties of bases and acids. So for example, he, he looked at acids and he found that they're sour and that bases are bitter. So that's what he done. But he also figured out that some vegetable dyes makes acids and bases turn into different colors. So he figured out that these vegetable dyes, which are now our indicators, can be used to classify things as either acids or bases. So this is what we're going to talk about in this video. These vegetable dyes, which were back then used by Robert Boyle, and nowadays they are either natural, and natural means that they just come from nature itself, or they're synthetic. And synthetic means that we've made them. We've changed them somehow to make them different. For example, the universal indicator that you often use in class, universal indicator is a synthetic one, whereas litmus paper is comes from a natural source. So what actually litmus paper is, and this is one which is quite important, one litmus paper, what that actually is, is you can see here, you can see these molds, and these molds are actually called lichen. And inside they have an extract, so they have an extract which we can use, and that extract we call litmus. So the extract comes from these molds, we call litmus, we, if we soak litmus in paper, we make litmus paper, and that we can use to dis distinguish things that are either acidic or basic. So for example, if it turns red, red means it's obviously acidic, and litmus paper, if it turns blue or stays blue, then it's usually basic, and if it has that purple blue, purple blue feeling to it, that means it's usually roundabout neutral. So that's, for example, litmus paper. That's one example, and we're going to talk about the other ones as well. What I'm going to show you now is just a quick simulation of how these papers actually work. So here we've got an actual quick simulation. This is the acid-based solution animation, and what we have here is our universe indicator. And here at the moment we have water. So water is our solution here, and this is the actual pH scale. This is our universe indicator. So at the moment we can say, say we'll figure out whatever the pH is by putting it inside solution and then comparing it to the scale here. So if we put it into water, it turns orange. What we can do then is go to the scale and see that orange means it has a pH of about 7. Now if we take something else, we take a strong acid and put that in solution. We can think, okay, strong acid probably has a pH of about 0 to 1 to 2, so it should turn something like this. Put it in solution, then we can investigate, yep, it would be roughly 2-ish, that same color, has a, this has a pH of 2, whatever this strong acid is. A weak acid would mean it has lower, so it should be around about 4, 5, 6, so it has a higher pH. So it should turn again the orangey color, and it does, so yeah, it would be something between 4, 5, and 6. 
if we take a strong base, we would expect to have a high pH, so something about 13 or 14. So we put it in and check the color. We can see, yep, it would be either 13 or 12 for this strong base, whatever that strong base is. And we take a weak base. Again, weak base, we expect it to have a pH of about 8 or 9. So we put it in and compare. We can find, yep, it has a pH of 9. So that's how we can use indicators. They change color, and that color tells us something about the pH. So I'll go over the actual ones we need to know, which were these ones here. So, litmus paper, phenylthylene, methyl orange, and bromothymol blue. These were the ones we need to go over. And they're also in this table here. So in this table, we've got methyl orange, litmus, bromothymol blue, and phenylthylene. Now what this actually this table what it actually has it has concentrations here of hydrochloric acid on the one side and concentration of sodium hydroxide on the other side. Remember, hydrochloric acid is quite acidic, whereas sodium hydroxide is quite basic. So the higher concentration of hydrochloric acid, the more acidic it would be. So in this case, it has the highest concentration here, concentration of one mole per liter. So that would be an a pH of zero, which means it's very acidic. And then as we go down here this way we decrease the concentration of hydrochloric acid, which means the pH will be lower as we go towards here. So pH of 1, 2, 3, 4, again, four, 10 to minus 4, that's 4, 10 to minus 5, 5, 6, and 0. So here we have no, no hydrochloric acid in our solution, which means it's neutral, so it has a pH of 7. In this case, that was for the hydrochloric acid, the acidic part. And the same thing we do for the base. So if it has a one mole per liter, that means it has a high solution of these sodium hydroxides. The sodium hydroxide was very basic. So we expect this to be, have the highest pH. This has a pH of 14. And we, again, we decrease the concentration of our sodium hydroxide as we go down this way, which would mean we would expect a decrease in our pH because it becomes less basic. So this has 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. And here again, we have absolutely no sodium hydroxide left, which means we would be neutral at 7. Now, how do we use these actual indicators? So here we have that ex an example. Let's say we have lemon juice here. It's our example. I want to figure out what pH it has. So we, have, we don't have a pH meter. We want to figure out what pH it has. And we can use these papers to figure that out. So for example, for lemon juice, if we use methyl orange, which was that first one, so the first one was methyl orange. If you use that, and we put, we dunk that into lemon juice, we put that methyl orange paper into lemon juice, it will turn red. So it turns red. It turns methyl orange red, which means it's one of these three, because all of these have turned red. So this tells us, the first one tells us, that lemon juice has a pH of around about either 0 to 2, because they've all turned red. Uh, it turns litmus paper red. So litmus paper is this one. And if we can see here, in this case, we've got litmus paper. All of these are red. So it, this tells us, using litmus paper, it tells us that the pH would be between 0 to 4. We don't know exactly what it is, but it is in that range somewhere. Now, if we look at bromothymol blue, it turns yellow, which means if we look at yellow, what turns yellow? So here, pH of 6 and 7 turns yellow. Oh, sorry, for here, bromothymol. Uh, pH of 0 to 5 turns yellow. So this tells us our pH range is 0 to 5. It's somewhere in that range. And then for phenylthylene, we can say, okay, this is at... Turns, it's a, the phenylthylene is turned colorless. And colorless for phenylthylene is from pH of 0 to... 7. So it's 0 to 7 as it is colorless. So using this, we can figure out, okay, it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 7. And the most specific one is this one, is using um, methyl orange, we found out that it was actually between 0 to 2. And the actual pH of, the, of if you use a pH meter, we will find out it has a pH of 2. So this is one way we can kind of get an estimate of what kind of pH it has. Also, for the next one, of water. So again, we don't know what the pH of water is. We want to figure that out. We can look at methyl orange. In this case, it turns methyl orange yellow. So we've got methyl orange here. And yellow is 
uh, pH of 6, pH of 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All of these are yellow, so this would mean it would be between somewhere between a pH of 6 to 14 if we use methyl orange. If we use litmus paper, litmus turns blue-purple, so either a pH of 6 to 8, 6 to 8, for that. So pur blue purple here, six, seven, blue purple at seven, blue purple at eight, so either six to eight. If you look at bromo um, bromothymol blue, it turns it green. So for, for that, we know it's either, it's actually there's only one which is green, which is pH of seven. So using bromothymol blue, we found out it had, must have a pH of seven. And if, you use, if we were to use thionylethylene, uh, it would turn colorless. So it turns colorless. But again, that's a huge range. So that's a range of 0 to 7. 0 to 7 pH. And the most specific, the most exact one of these was using bromothymol. It told us exactly that it was pH of 7. And we know that water is neutral, so water actually has a pH of 7. And for the last example, if we were to use ammonia, so we don't know what ammonia is. Let's say we don't know what it is. We want to test it. We put it into methyl orange. We put methyl orange indicator and it turns yellow. So in this case, we know that methyl orange turns yellow. So it would be anywhere between 6 and 14. So it's a huge range. This is not a very one, good one to use. We want to have a, sh a smaller range. But it tells us it's probably basic because it's somewhere between 6 to 14. If we use litmus blue, litmus blue turns blue. That's what it says. It turns blue. So we look at the colors for litmus blue, where it's blue. It is from pH of 9 to pH of 14, it's blue. 9 to 14. So it's going to be somewhere in that range. Now if we use bromothymol blue, we find out that it has a pH somewhere of here, but 9, which is blue, to 14. So the same for, they're both the same in this case, they give us the same answer. Again, we know it's now, we know it's a base, we don't know exactly what pH it has. And we look at Thionyl thionine, it says it turns crimson. And crimson here is either pH of 11, so it's turning crimson 11, and it goes all the way to 14. So here we know that it has a pH of somewhere to 11 to 14. And that means this one is the closest one, this one gives us the most exact one. And ammonia actually has a pH of 12. So that range 11 to 14 makes sense. This is a way we can use indicators to figure out roughly what kind of pH something has without having a pH meter. Now when it comes to these ones, for example, litmus is generally useful. So litmus is useful to find out if something is a base or an acid because if it's an acid, it will turn red. If it's a base, it will turn blue. But it won't tell us exactly. Like won't be, We won't be able to distinguish between a weak acid or a weak base or a strong base and a strong acid because for example they all turn red so it's, they turn red quite early so we can't distinguish between exactly what kind of acid it is we can just tell it's a base or it's an acid whereas with for example phenyl phenylthylene we can't use it to test if it's an acid at all because from 0 to 7 it's all colorless so it could be if it's colorless it could be having a pH of 7 or it could have a pH of 0 so it's not useful to figure out if something's an acid but if it's a base, we can get a more exact um, figure of its base because it'll turn different colors when it's base. So pale pink when it has a pH of 8, pink when it has a pH of 9, deep pink when it has a pH of 10, and that crimson when it has a pH of 11 to 14. So we can use that phenylphthalene to figure out if something is a base and what kind of base it is. Is it a strong base or weak base? But we can't use it to test acids. So each of these has their pros and their cons. They're not all bad. They all not. They all have their own uses, which is why we use use a range of these indicators, not just one indicator, but many indicators, to figure out different types of substances. So, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.